Hello there guys, it's Ibu Blue Cow here, back again on a video and today I'm going to do what if deck was adopted by Miracle, part 4, hope you enjoy it. So like always, a small recap is needed. So after that, we cover the aftermath of Deku losing his tail, and for a while, he was able to walk properly. Then Ryuko called Miruko and asked her how she's doing, and she invited her and Deku to stay in her agency for a bit, to catch up, and she wanted to know Deku better. And after they met, Ryuko quickly realized that Deku is almost like Miruko, although a bit more calmer. Until a year after meeting him, she saw one of his anger outbursts. So Miruko and Ryuko decide to test Deku, to see if he can interact with other people because he need to if he want to become a hero and go to UA. So they give him a ticket to a concert, Deku went along, but unbeknownst to him, Miruko and Ryuko also buy the ticket for themselves, and they watched him from afar. And to their shock, especially Miruko, Deku's the one who decided to talk with a girl. It's Jiro, because he saw her along and a bit upset. And after she tell him why, she's along and a bit short, so she cannot watch the concert properly, Deku invited her to come with him. He have a free seat. She accepted, and at the end of the concert, both of them won a guitar each, signed by the band. After that they went separate ways, but after Deku saw a group of shady people heading in the direction where Jiro was, he followed them. And when they pinned her to the wall and took the guitar, Deku jumped in and started beating them. Oh well, he knocked two of them, Jiro did knock one, and the one who threatened Jiro telling her that he would have, or they would have a fun time, he have it the worst. Deku kicked him with such force that sent him flying, then when he was on the ground, Deku would kick him again in his side, then he started stepping on his chest, and he started applying more pressure. But before he can continue with his punishment, Jiro stopped him. After that, Miroko and Ryuko show themselves, and Deku immediately know what they are doing here. After that, Miroko tells Deku to take Jiro home, he did, and after he went back to the agency, he passed out. And I think that's it for the summary, so let's begin. So a week or so went by since last part. And in this time, Deku realized that Miraku is acting a bit weird. She's spending less time patrolling and kicking villains, and more time with him. He's not complaining or anything, but it's a bit weird. Why the sudden change, he starts asking himself. He starts thinking of a reason why. And then it hit him. She changed after the concert. So what happened in the concert that made her change? I was there listening to music, and I talked to Jiro. Oh, I get it now. I will talk to her when she comes back. So after an hour or so, she come back. Deku asked her how was her day. Fine, but a bit boring. There is not a lot of villains. Deku nods. Then he stood silent for seconds. Then he tell her, Mom, can we talk? Sure thing, what's up? What's up with the change? He know the reason, but he just want to confirm it. She tell him, what change? You stay in the house or around me way more than usual. So why the sudden change? Miracle started getting nervous and she told him, What, I cannot spend some time with my son? Or I am bothering you or something? Deku tell her, no, you're not. It's just a bit sudden. And I think I know why. Mirko's eyes widen. You know? Deku slowly nod. You heard me what I told to Jiro in a concert, didn't you? Mirko looked down and nods. It's just, I didn't know that you feel lonely each time I go away in patrol. So as your mother, I need to try harder to make you happy and be there for you. So I... But she stopped when Deku hugged her. Then Deku told her, look mom, I understand. I know being a hero will take a lot of your time. Sure, maybe I will feel lonely sometimes. Then Deku looked at her and smiled. But I understand, as much as I need you, other people do too. I know that you need to save them like you did to me. Plus, I know that you are trying your best with being a hero and being my mom. So I know that you care for me, and that it's enough for me. Miriko tears up a bit, knowing Deku doesn't feel any hatred toward her, and actually understand her more than anyone. So that put her at ease. So she hugged Deku tightly and tell him, I could not have wished for a better son. Thanks, Izuku. Deku smiled. After that, everything went back to normal, or normal for them. But one day when they are training, Deku would ask or tell Miroko to go a bit serious. He wanted to see how strong he is compared to her. You sure? She asked him. He nods. She smirked and tell him, all right? So she charged at him. Deku immediately was in the back foot. She is surpassing him in every way imaginable. Strength, speed, technique, endurance, everything. He knew that his mom is strong, but not this much. 
So after he blocked one of her kicks, he gets sent flying backwards. And that left him open. She throws another kick, but before he can hit him, Deku suddenly moves out the way. Both Deku and Miracle are shocked. Deku because he just avoided Miracle's attack, and Miracle for other thing. Then he tell her, alright, round two, but she stop him and tell him to look behind him. He did, and he saw that he still grow back. Deku is overjoyed. He can finally have a chance to try to master it. Miracle is happy for him, but also a bit concerned. It has been two years since last time he transformed. So he did get stronger. So if he transform again, he will do way more damage than last time. Then she tell him, Izuku, you know what that mean, right? Deku got serious and tell her, yeah, I know. Maybe we should ask Ryuko for some tips. You know, because she have a transformation quirk. Hmm, good idea, Izuku. So she called her up and Ryuko was surprised. He still grows back? Yeah, he just did right now. Anyway, can you give us some ideas or how to manage it or control it? Ryuko thinks about it and tell her that... To be completely honest with you, I never lost control over my form. Sure, it was hard at first controlling a new body, but I never lost control. So his transformation is different than mine. I see, you're right. I guess we need to know how he can control it first. I already know how he can transform, but I'm afraid that he will hurt someone or do a lot of damage to his surrounding. Then Ryuko told her, well, if it's that serious, we can ask for half of the only person that can erase quirks. Erase your head, Miracle Procap? Yeah. I heard that he become a teacher at UA, so you can find him there. And you can ask for a meeting because you are a higher ranking pro hero. You're right, but... Let me guess, Ryuko told her. This will be like asking for help, right? Miracle sides. But I have to do it. For his sake. You know, Ryuko told her. I kind of like the new you. <sighs> Shut it. Ryuko giggled. After that, Miracle called UA, especially Nizu and ask for his help. Nizu was surprised. Sure, he doesn't know her at a personal level, but... But he heard that she never, never asked for help. So a bit of a surprise, but he tell her that she can come to UA tomorrow. Anyway, he tell Aizawa to help. She thanks him. And by the way, I just remembered something. Some of you asked me if Miracle's change in personality was caused because of Deku's parents dying. And the answer is yes, but just slightly. Sure, she felt guilty because she wasn't there. And she also felt bad for him, so she could actually just watch over him without adopting him. But the reason she did it is, one, she knows that he's strong. Second, and this is the most important reason, both of them almost have the same mentality. So she quickly understand that no ordinary person will be a good fit for him. And I can hear you guys asking, but that will not change anything. Well, you're right, at first. But the more time she spent with Deku, and they bonded, the more of her motherly instincts start kicking in. Plus, like I said, Deku is a bit more calmer than her. So he will influence her a bit. So I hope this will satisfy us as an answer. So with that out of the way, let's go back to the story. After she ended the call, Miracle walked to Deku and tell him what's going to happen. He was a bit uneasy because for him, this is the first time he will go to school. And not any school, the school of his dreams, or he assumes because he can't remember. So Mirko start comforting him and assure him that everything will be alright. He just nods. So fast forward to next day, and both of them are at the gate of UA. Perez might come and greet them and tell them, I assume you are here for meeting Aizawa and Nizu, Miracle nods, so he tells them to follow him. They arrive at Nizu's office, they introduce themselves, so I assume that you are Izuku, Nizu asked him, Deku nods, he smiled and tell him to follow him. They did and Deku is a bit amazed, this school is massive, and Nizu tell him of course it will be because we have to train you properly. Plus there is quite a lot of students, we need as much space as we can. I see, Deku replied. So they go to a field, and they met up with Aizawa, he's currently teaching a class. And by the way, this Aizawa is not as nice as the anime. He's as cold as the beginning of this series. The original one, I mean. Especially to new people. So when he saw them, he started walking toward them and tell them, So you are the kid, right? Deku nod. Then Aizawa looked at Miracle. It's still not night time, so we have to wait. They nod. Then the students start recognizing Miracle and start rushing toward her. And Deku take this opportunity and start walking away. And Aizawa do the same. He let the class rest because they just finished training so they can do whatever they want. And after 5 minutes, Aizawa saw Deku and he's standing along while Miracle is talking to her fans. So Aizawa walked toward him and told him, why don't you introduce yourself to the others? I'm pretty sure that they would love to meet Miracle's son. So basically Aizawa is testing him to see how he think about getting famous. Deku shook his head and told him, nah, it's not my glory. It's hers, not mine. She earned it and I'll earn mine. Aizawa was surprised. He already liked this kid. He doesn't like taking the fame from other people. Plus from his general demeanor, he can understand that he's not interested in fame a lot. 
like he would enjoy having it, but it's not a priority for him. Plus, he did get some information about him from Miracle, so he asked him, Since we are waiting, show me what you can do. And like Aizawa expected, Deku smiled and tell him sure. So they begin, and Aizawa realizes that Deku has potential. He's strong and fast, plus he has some decent technique. He assumes it's because of Miracle. But like the pro from Ryuko's agency pointed out, Deku is mainly using his legs. Sure, there is nothing wrong of only using your legs. But Aizawa knew that Deku has a power-up quirk. So he's wasting some of his potential by using only his legs. So Aizawa decided to test him to see how he can handle pressure. So midway through his assault, he cancelled his quirk and start taunting him. Because like I said earlier, Miracle did tell him a bit about him. Meaning she did tell him about his anger outburst. So Aizawa start insulting him and like he expected, Deku got pissed. He start getting sloppy, then Aizawa start thinking. He have a lot of potential, but because of his anger problems, it cancel it out. Then Aizawa need Deku in the stomach, then he tell him, Your anger is your weakness. Sure, it make you stronger, but you become sloppy. So if you cannot handle it, just give up on being a hero. And when Miracle saw that, she get a bit annoyed because Aizawa just tell her son to just give up, practically in front of her. So she start walking toward him, but before she can reach him, Deku start getting up. He growled at Aizawa telling him, I am not giving up. I don't care who you are. My life, my decision. So Deku charged at him one more time. Aizawa sighed. He dodged Deku's attack and prepared himself to block another attack. And he was shocked because Deku just died. But he soon realized that he's avoiding his quirk. So he started walking toward him. And Deku in other hand started thinking of a plan. I cannot let him see me or he will cancel my quirk. I need to think. But he can still feel the anger start rising. What Aizawa told him, even though it's true, it did piss him off. Then he started telling himself, Control it, Izuku. Come on, you can do it. Okay, think of a plan. I need to get close to him without him seeing me. Then it hit him. He punched the wall or the pillar that he's behind and took a chunk of it. Then he threw it at Aizawa's direction. Aizawa was surprised, so he dodged it. That could do it a couple of more times until Aizawa realized that this is just a waste of time. Then suddenly, Deku threw three pieces. Almost one after the other. Aizawa dodged the first two, then by the corner of his eye he saw something. Deku is steady on the second rock, and he immediately leaped toward him, throwing a kick. Aizawa tried to jump back, then he realized that the third rock is blocking his way. So he prepared himself to block the attack. He did, and he was able to cancel Deku's quirk at the same time. So even though Deku landed the kick, it was a bit powerful, but not something Aizawa cannot handle. But what he saw next actually shocked him. Deku took the momentum of him blocking the attack and throws a punch at Aizawa. So Aizawa was shocked, he can't use his hands. It's a good strategy but it's not something that I cannot handle. So he moved out the way. Then he saw Deku smirking. Then he felt something grabbing him. Deku just grabbed his scarf. Aizawa was shocked, so that's what he was aiming for. So Deku once again used the momentum of him falling to grab Aizawa by the scarf and slam him against the ground. And because of the scarf is just around his throat, Aizawa cannot escape in time. And Deku instantly tried to land another blow. But this time Aizawa dodged it and wrapped Deku with his scarf and cancelling his cork at the same time. So he won and he told Deku that. Deku tried to shake the scarf off but it's no use so he gives up. Aizawa released him and Miracle walked toward him and asked him is he okay. Deku nod. Then they were interrupted by Aizawa telling Deku, You did good kid, still you need to work on keeping that anger under control. But he did good. Then Aizawa started rubbing his throat. Deku's pole actually did hurt him a bit. Miracle smirked and started ruffling Deku's hair. Then the students start walking toward Deku, congratulating him on doing a good job. Then suddenly the pillar that Deku was taking chunks of start falling apart. Everyone start rushing toward the rock or avoid it for the case of the students. And Deku quickly realized that he will not reach it. He's too slow. And everything around him starts moving slowly. And instinctively, he stick his right hand in front of him. Then he starts feeling this heat on it. And it's getting more and more hotter. Then he yet and fire a greenish beam toward the pillar, completely erasing it. And the beam went through the roof and up in the air until nobody can see it anymore. Then everyone was shocked, especially Deku. He started looking at his hands. Did I just do that? He asked them before he collapsed. He's exhausted. That single blast took everything from him. So he was taken to recovery girl to rest. Meanwhile, Miracle is actually impressed that he was able to use it. So they ask her what she mean. She tell them that we know that Deku have another quirk. He can use his vitality to shoot lasers. But we don't know how he can use it. Well, until now. Avon is impressed, especially Aizawa. Not because of his quirk, but the reason he used it. He used it when he needed to protect others. Then Aizawa start thinking. I want him in my class. This kid have a lot of potential. 
After that, we skip an hour and Deku woke up. He looked around and saw a cavalry girl. He asked her where he is. She tell him, and if you can walk, follow me. Let's go meet your mother. And Aizawa. Deku nods. And after they met up with them, Miriko went to Deku's level and tell him, is he okay? He nods, then she asks him if he remember what he did. He nods again, but I don't think that I will use it anytime soon. Mirko stood up and tell him, well, it looked like that we have two quirks that we need to figure out now. Deku smile. Then we fast forward a few hours. It's night time, and they are in empty arena or space or anything without buildings or trees or anything. Just a flat surface. So everyone kept their distance from Deku, then they signal to him to do it. He nods and starts looking at the moon. He's a bit worried, then his expressions changed to nothing. He just stood there. Then his tail started wiggling. Mirko told him it's going to happen. Then Deku started growling. He started getting bigger and bigger. His clothes got shredded. And Mirko is glad that he did think ahead and bring a spare. And after a couple of seconds, Deku fully transformed to his Ozaro form. And once again, he's completely berserk. And like Mirko expected, Deku is stronger than last time. Deku starts stomping, going berserk. But before Aizawa can stop him, Mirko told him to wait. She jumps up to meet Deku's eyes and tell him to calm down. Try to remember yourself, Izuku. Don't let this power control you. It's your body. And like last time when Deku hurt her, he start to fight for control. But sadly, like last time, he loses. Then he pushed Mirko out of the way. She was able to block his attack with her feet, because if you guys don't know, her quirk let her negate any damage from him when she used her legs. So she lands safely. Still, she was shocked. Not only Deku got stronger, but he's also faster. Then she sighed and signaled to Aizawa to do it. And he cancelled Deku's quirk. Then Deku slowly started going back to his human form. And when he did, he passed out. Then Miriko walked up to him and she covered him. Then she carries him. Everyone else, meaning Aizawa, Nizu and the recovery girl, walked toward her. Then Nizu tell her, I'm glad that you come to us with this matter. Because if he lost control when he was outside, God knows how much damage he will do. She agreed with him. He still need to learn how to control it. But you need to give him some credit. This is the second time he transformed. And guys, I assume that they know about Deku's first transformation. They're not agreeing with her. Then they tell her to take him home for the night and come back tomorrow. They want to see what exactly make him transform. Sure, they know it's the moon, but why exactly? If it's just the moon, why don't he transform when it's not a full moon? Why he need to look at it before he can transform? She nods and tells them that she will tell him, but in the end, it's his decision. Avon smile. So she booked a night in a nearby hotel. They don't live close to UA. So she put him on the bed and fast forward the next day. Deku woke up. He started looking around because he don't know the room. Then he realized that he's naked. What? Why I'm naked? What happened last night? Then he remember. Oh, that. I lost control again, didn't I? Oh, wait. Oh, thank God. I still have my tail. What is your secret? Deku started looking at his tail. How can I use you? And Deku's mumbling was able to wake up Mirko. So she checked on him and gave him the spare clothes. Deku giggled and tell her, I completely forgot about bringing some clothes with me. Thanks, mom. She smiled, ruffled his hair and tell him, I know that you will forget. So I thought ahead. Deku giggled. So now we have another huge time skip. Almost a year. During this time, every month, specifically every full moon, Deku is at UA. They are trying to teach him how to control his power in a safe environment. Plus, when he go berserk, and that always happen, Aizawa stop him. And they start gathering information about him. So they realize the reason Deku transform is because a special wave that come from the moon. And it's only strong enough to make Deku transform when it's a full moon. So while they are teaching Deku how to control his power, they are building a device that block the waves. Just in case if that happen again. Sure, it's not ready yet, but they are working on it. So one night when Deku transform and he went berserk once again, and right before Aizawa used his quirk, they heard Deku talk. Not this time. They were shocked to hear Deku's voice. Sure, it's different, but he can talk. And then they realized that he has some control over this form. Then he tell Aizawa to use his quirk on him. He cannot handle it much longer. Aizawa obliged and he cancelled his quirk. Deku went back to his human form and this time he's still conscious, although exhausted. They congratulate him on doing a great work. Then Mirko asked him how it feel. Deku tell her it's a bit weird. It's like watching a movie. I am in there, but something else is taking control. Aizawa tell him, something? Deku nod and tell him, it's almost like I become a brute again, like my instinct took over. And my consciousness took a back seat. I was able to get some control, but it was too much. 
I see, he reply. Anyway, you did good for today. Rest up. Deku nod. Then Nizu walk up to Aizawa and tell him, It's me or you having a soft spot with this kid? Aizawa tell him it's not a soft spot, but I can see a lot of potential in this kid. Plus, he's a hard worker. Unlike the class that you give me. Yes, this is happening at the same year Aizawa expelled the whole class. Sure, they have powerful quirks. But they don't take the hero job seriously. But this kid knows the risk. He have those eyes. What eyes? Nizu asked him. Aizo looked at him dead in the eyes and tell him. The eyes of someone that have already met in death. I see Nizu reply. So I assume that you want him in your class? Aizawa nod. But one day Nizu tell Deku to come to UA. They have a gift for him. Deku agreed to meet them. But there is one problem. Mirko is busy right now. And Deku was still not comfortable going along. So he call her and tell her what's going on. She tell him to not worry and she get him cover. And to wait a bit. He did then hear a knock on the door. He opened and saw Ryuku. Deku greeted to her. And because of their time spending together, Ryuku become almost like an ant figure to him. So he's way more than comfortable around her. So they go to UA, they go to Nizu's office, he geared to them and tell them to follow him. They did and they go to the support class. When they enter, Power Roder tell them to wait a second. They did and they saw there is three people there. Mirko, Tamaki and Nijirai. They greeted each other and the three of them already heard about Deku. So Nijiri be carefree that she is, she asked him about his quirk. Deku scratched back of his head and told them, Well, actually I have four quirks. Four? I have one yell. Deku nod. I have super strength, an Uzaro transformation. Deku pointed his tail. I have a Zenkai quirk. Zenkai, they ask him. So he explained that each time he got hurt and healed, he will get a small boost. And the more damage I took, the bigger the boost I receive. I see, that's interesting. And the fourth one, Nijiri told him. The fourth one let me use my vitality into lasers. Nijiri perk up and tell him, oh, just like mine. Then he start floating. Deku's eyes widened and he start getting a bit excited. Wait, you can fly with your power? That's awesome. Nijiri smiled and tell him, wait, you cannot do it yourself? Then Deku reply, you see, I don't have a lot of control over it. Well, I can give you some tips on how to use it. Use it if you want. Really? She nods. And while they are waiting, Nijiri start teaching Deku how to use his power. So I forgot to mention that during this year, Deku did also learn how to use his, well, key blasts. The problem is he just learned how to shoot them. Nothing more, nothing less. So seeing that he can fly with it is actually new to him. Anyway, let's go back to the story. Nijiri start telling Deku how to use his power and for flying he to focus on his lower body. He need to push the energy below him to push him upward. Deku took a deep breath and start trying. And to the surprise and to the surprise of all of them, Deku was able to float, but he wasn't able to hold his balance. So he face first the ground. Ow, that hurt, Deku commented. Then he starts standing up. So power the come back and give Mirio a costume. It's ready, so take it. Mirio thinks him. Then he turned to Deku and give him a watch. What's this? Deku asked him. Power Roder explained that this watch can absorb the blood wave coming from the moon, preventing you from transforming. Wear it whenever there is a full moon. Deku wear it and thanks him. So all of them exit the room and Mario asks him about the watch. Why do you need it? Deku explained his quirk and how he's unable to use it properly. I see, Mario reply. Well, I know that feeling. Deku looked at him and tell him what do you mean. Then Mirio tell him about his quirk and how it's difficult to use it. Deku agreed with him and tell him but... But it's also exciting. Why? Mirio asked him. To prove everyone wrong and show them that hard work and perseverance will pay off. Mirio smile and tell him true that. Then they say their goodbyes and Deku and Ryuku leave UA. In the way, Ryuku asked Deku about his interaction with Mirio and Nijirei. Tamaki did not talk too much. Deku tell her that they are interesting. He can see that he's almost like Mirio. Both of them are trying to control quirks that people say they are impossible to use. And for Nijirei, she's a bit weird, but in a good way. Plus, her quirk is very strong and she knows how to use it. And that pick Ryuku. Maybe she should call her to do an internship with her? But that is a question for next part. Because I'm gonna stop it right here. So what do you think of it, guys? Will Deku be able to control his Ozaro form? Will he go to UA? What will happen? next leave your thoughts and comments down below and if you enjoyed the video drop a like it helped me a lot and if you're new subscribe there is more videos like this coming and like always guys peace